Good morning and welcome to the class. Uh, thank you for connecting. My name is Brian and we are in Dublin and it's a good opportunity for me to return to work. Um, finally, I have a little space at home to try to work because with the pandemic in May, it was necessary for me to stop. So now finally, I have a little space to continue and hopefully uh, everything will be good. And it's a very good opportunity for me to know new people and to grow online and to give some free classes to help uh, people at the moment because I know obviously it's a very difficult moment and also learning English is a big challenge. It's very stressful for a lot of people and it's very important for a lot of people because I know a lot of people really want English for uh, a job, for academics. So for you, English is very important, and that's the reason for me to give the free class. So I hope we have no problem with the technology, no problem with Wi-Fi, no problem with the computer, and um, it's possible I have the dog, so maybe sometimes you can hear my dog or family. Um, we have six people at home, so hopefully we are able to work, no problem, and that's the idea, to try and help, okay? So the structure of the class will be very similar from the other days. If today is your first day, welcome. And probably we have some new people, but of course I'm sure we have some regular people also. So I'm very happy to uh, teach everybody and it's a fantastic opportunity with the technology and with Facebook and uh, Zoom. Okay, so here I'm gonna show you my um, screen because I have a few uh, little introduction documents to explain so first is the document for today so today obviously is Wednesday and um, yeah it's the same it's the structure will be very similar from normal okay so I'm going to show you here just the agenda for today so first we have an introduction document and every morning it's the same so here is the agenda for today the plan so an introduction document I want to explain the technical vocabulary and the most important um, concepts because at the beginning it's very important to explain the concepts because during the class I mention a lot the technical vocabulary okay so the introduction is first after the introduction probably we will continue with the book this is just a typical book um, and last week we started with the book so the story is about a manager a football manager and the vocabulary is very conversational and it's a good uh, book for expressions for vocabulary and to really understand people so that's the plan today we will continue with the next page also I have a video so after the book we have another video to listen to um, a native conversation and the conversation is from Ireland and the accent is very strong so the video for one or two minutes will be very interesting and very challenging and very difficult. For me, I hope you can understand me. It's possible with the subtitles or with the captions. So I am sorry if it's very difficult to understand me. I really apologize and the class possibly is difficult. Yes, the class might be very, very difficult, but I hope it can help a little. We have people from Brazil, we have people from Romania, from Thailand, from Vietnam, from Indonesia, Spain, we have uh, South American people. So we have lots of different people and this is important for me to keep in mind to try to explain. But it is possible you will have difficulty and I hope everything will be okay. So the captions and the subtitles are available also to help and um, hopefully that should be okay. So after the book, we have the video. Then we have the list of maybe phrasal verbs and a list of idioms. That's another possibility. And we have a possibility also of the grammar exercises for uh, just to practice a little. For speaking, if you want to try to participate in the class, this is an option. Recently, we have invited a few people to practice speaking during the class. And that is possible today as well with Zoom. Here you can see the ID. Um, normally I I'm gonna make it bigger so you can see. This is the ID, the code for Zoom. If you want to connect, um, you can see the, the code here. Sorry, I'm gonna show you a bit bigger. 
so the ID is here and the passcode so during the class if you want to participate with practicing speaking that is a very good possibility and just an introduction you can explain your your where you are calling from you can explain uh, what you do and we can explain or talk about the pandemic and little general conversations and I can try to help with the pronunciation or with the corrections for everybody okay so that is possible with the participation and now I go back to the agenda so that's finally the, the agenda and the plan for today okay so I'm gonna put my notes here I have the notes for the class and I'll put this at the bottom right and now I will show you the introduction so this document is the introduction document and every morning it's very very important for me there are three ca categories okay so there are three very important categories okay so that's it perfect we have somebody joining so probably during the class or at the end we will um, we will continue okay so there are three sections the first section is use of English the second section are tenses and the third section is just grammar concepts so at the beginning of the class it's very important I explain and introduce the technical concepts of the structure of English because every language has a structure and English is the same and it's necessary at the beginning to understand the technical concepts for example phrasal verb present continuous past continuous idiom modal verb preposition substantive adjective adverb you need to be familiar with the concepts first okay that's the most important job really you have to be very familiar with the concepts first because during the class I mention and I speak about the concepts a lot okay so at the beginning for five minutes I want to explain the important uh, terms because they are so uh, common and so important for the class okay so English we have different English around the world we have different accents in particular so in Ireland there is an accent in London there is a different accent even in London you have different accents in London and the same in Dublin we have different accents Australia New Zealand United States so this is a big part to understand English accents are very problematic and they're very difficult for you to catch and to understand so this is very very hard and it's a big 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 difficulty to understand people with different accents okay people have different velocity some people speak very very quickly some people speak very slowly so again it's a big part to understand English the accents for me in Dublin and in Ireland maybe the U is very strong so it's possible Dublin butter bus so the U is possible very strong in Dublin but phonetically in the book it's maybe different phonetically the U is maybe Dublin butter bus but for me it's possible I have a little accent maybe with the U TH is also another possibility for the accent the TH should be this that these those but for me and for some people in Ireland it's like a D this that and that's a big difference with the phonetics so you need to be aware and to be conscious of the difficult the different uh, pronunciation um, characteristics from different people okay also the OU in Dublin or for me is maybe very strong for example house uh, some people have a different pronunciation mouse house so how uh, it's just interesting to be aware okay phrasal verbs are a big part in English and number one for me probably number one the most important part to understand English because in general I think a lot of people have a good foundation of grammar I think a lot of people understand grammar in general a lot of people can speak but phrasal verbs we have thousands of phrasal verbs and we use them all the time basically a phrasal verb is usually a verb and a preposition with a second significance so it's literal but also a second significance with the phrasal verb and we use them in conversation we use them in formal situations informal movies family friends all the time we use phrasal verbs and they're so quick and so fast and they're very difficult to catch if English is not your first language so phrasal verbs are very important and during the class I try to focus a lot on the phrasal verbs because they're a big big part of English okay similarly 
idioms are also very common and very important so idioms are like expressions and sometimes they are funny sometimes they are entertaining but also they are very common and we use idioms all the time with family with friends every situation we have idioms and again we have thousands of idioms phrasal verbs thousands and idioms this morning i checked and the wikipedia said there are approximately 25,000 idioms but for phrasal verbs i think there's more okay so it's it just shows you that quantity we have a lot of phrasal verbs and idioms so for me this first category use of english i think is the most important i really think that use of english is a big big area and during the class i try to identify and try to help with the phrasal verbs okay conversation and pronunciation of course is so important again study you can study grammar you can read a book in school you study a lot so i'm sure a lot of you have a good foundation of grammar listening is very very difficult skill writing is a completely different skill so listening writing studying and then speaking so speaking is a completely different ability a completely different talent and probably you need to try to practice regularly to speak and during the class i hope it's a possibility or an option to practice some speaking uh, with me or with two or three people we can have a debate we can choose a topic and have a discussion and in the future that's definitely very important okay and pronunciation so english we have some problems with pronunciation we have some irregular phonetics and i will try to help as well with the pronunciation to try to identify the pronunciation problems okay the next category is very important of tenses so when you speak in english you need to be conscious and you need to be aware of the tense okay so i'll make it a little bit bigger so everybody can see so for me there are tenses so in japanese in spanish in indonesian in malay it's the same you need to consider the concept do you speak in the present do you speak in the past do you speak in the future is it continuous so you need to be familiar with the different times in English and every language so it's very important and we have a few concepts a few terms for example the simple the present simple one action you do in the present the past simple one action that is completed in the past and the future simple one action that you will complete in the future this is the simple the next concept is the continuous we have the present continuous one action you do continuously in the present the past continuous the same concept one action you did continuously in the past and the future continuous one action you will do in the in the future so the construction is usually the subject are you he she subject extra verb to be i am and then the gerund of the verb and the gerund is the ing for example i am eating i am drinking i am talking in the present continuous the past i was eating i was drinking and the future i will be eating i will be drinking okay that's the continuous and also the simple one problem with the simple we have a lot of irregular verbs in the past simple and that's a big difficulty in english the past simple we have a lot of irregular verbs okay so that's the simple the continuous the next concept is the perfect so we have the concept of the present perfect and the past perfect so the present perfect is usually a period in the past and it's finished but it's related and it's relevant to the present that's the present perfect it's a period in the past and it's finished but it's probably related to the present and the construction is the subject extra verb have and the participle of the verb so the participle is the third column for example i have eaten my breakfast this morning so it's finished it's completed but it's relevant to now because now i am not hungry that's the present perfect the past perfect is very similar except the verb to have is in the past and the concept is a period usually before another action in the past simple so that's the big difference between the present simple uh, sorry the present perfect present perfect and the past perfect the past perfect is usually the period in the past before a past simple and the present perfect is usually finished but relevant to now so a little technical a little heavy with the theory but you need to be familiar with the idea okay it's possible also in the future perfect as well we have the infinitive so the infinitive of the verb is basically the base or the foundation and usually in english the infinitive is two 
to eat, to drink, to go, to have, to talk. That is the infinitive and the base of the verb. And during the class, I mention a lot the infinitive and you need to be familiar with the concept. Infinitive is to eat, to drink, to go. Infinitive, okay? The conditionals are a big area and in the books, the conditionals, the theory for the conditionals is very heavy. The theory for the conditionals is very hard and the theory is a little strict. There are a lot of rules in the book for the conditional. With the zero conditional, first conditional, second conditional, third conditional, mixed. But in reality, in conversation, in my opinion, it's more flexible, it's more, uh, it's less strict. Basically, it's connected to if. If I drink the Coca-Cola, I will be, I will have energy. Okay, so it's one action is dependent on the other. It's a condition. That's important. And we have lots of different complicated tenses. If I had spoken to my friend yesterday, I would have mentioned the football. So the complication is the tenses with the conditional, okay? The active and the passive is another addition. So the active and the passive is a little advanced, but it is very common and it is very important. And basically, um, I recommend in exams, if you are preparing an exam, try to use a range of tenses a range of or a variety of tenses this is very good for exams but basically the active is the subject the verb and the object and the passive you change the position the passive you have the object at the at the beginning you have the extra verb to be the participle of the original verb and the original subject one example so the man kicked the ball okay that's the act of the man kicked the ball and then the passive the ball was kicked by the man so it's just an important concept to be familiar with. They're the tenses and the different times and they're so important in every moment you need to be familiar with the time. Okay, And we have a few more ideas or concepts with grammar. The noun or the substantive. So you need to be familiar with the idea of a noun and a substantive. What is a noun and a substantive? It's a person, it's a place, it's a thing. The majority of things in English are substantives or nouns. It's the same. So jacket table chair light substantive in english we need an article with the substantive and we have two possibilities with the article we have the indefinite article or the definite article for example house a house so pronunciation a or a is possible that's the indefinite article a house is the indefinite article and the house is specific definite article we also have the adjective and the job or the function of the adjective is to describe the noun. So the article, house, substantive, big adjective. So the big house, okay? And the position of the adjective is before the substantive. Very important, okay? Adverb. So the function of the adverb, you can see here in the middle, the function of the adverb is to describe the verb. And usually the adverb has the ly at the end. For example, quickly, slowly, rapidly happily so they are the adverbs we have a lot of adverbs and the function the job the purpose of the adverb is to describe the verb for example drink drink quickly talk talk slowly so the adverb is connected with the verb and usually it is after the verb okay so that's just another concept to be familiar and um, to, to recognize the modal verbs in english we have a list of modal verbs and we use modal verbs all the time. Basically, the first one is can. Can is related to ability. I can climb the mountain. I can speak Japanese. I can contact my friend. It's my ability and permission. Can I enter the building? Can I speak to you? It's a permission for question and ability, number one. Could, may and might are practically the same for possibility or options. We could go to the cinema. We may go to the cinema. We might go to the cinema. They are practically the same significance. May and might are probably a little more polite and a little more formal. That's the only difference really between may, might and could. Shall is a little older and more formal and it's very polite and it's probably similar to will. Shall we have dinner? Shall we speak to our friend? Shall we contact my um, other friend? So it's will, it's like a question, shall we go, will we go? Okay, so that's very important. Should and ought to are the same. So the pronunciation of the second verb is difficult because the G is silent. We ought to and should is very, very common. Ought to is more formal 
and ought to is more polite and should is more general but typically it's related to recommendation and advice so my advice to you you should watch the movie you should contact your friend you ought to visit Hungary you ought to travel to Poland okay so it's my advice and my recommendation must is obligation and the you in Dublin it's possible must so that's a good example of the you I must but in reality with the phonetics in the book it's probably I must okay and it's obligation you have no choice you must collect the children you must do the homework you must contact your friend you have to it's obligation and you have no choice okay so they are the modal verbs and the big rule with the modal verbs the next verb after the modal verb the next verb is the infinitive to eat to drink but we always eliminate two this is the rule after the modal so correct I can go I might eat I may look incorrect I may to go I might to look I could to talk so we need to eliminate two okay so that is important prepositions are a big part of English of course so we have maybe 150 prepositions in English basically they are connected to movement and position and direction so movement direction and position so talking I am talking to you it's the direction okay I am looking I am looking at you so prepositions are very important also position and um, the cat is on the table the cat is under the table the cat is over beside in front of behind below so we have a lot of prepositions okay so they're very important and particularly in relation to phrasal verbs the preposition with the phrasal verb is usually associated with emotion for example up is positive up is happy up is creation and down is negative down is sad down is depressing and down is destroyed so there is an association with emotion and the movement of the preposition okay the next area is very important because it's a common error and a common confusion between uh, the technical term is pronoun so we have the possessive pronoun we have the possessive adjective we have the object pronoun so the technical name is pronoun but in reality it's for example my book your book or the book is mine the book is yours or give the book to me or give the book to you and it's a common confusion particularly in relation to he she him her hers or his so it's a very common confusion and you need to be very very clear in this area okay so one example my book okay or the book is mine you can see here or give the book to me so we have different words for different uh, people okay and also the difference between this that these and those I am curious if you are familiar with the difference between this that these and those basically it's singular and plural plural so the difference between singular and plural but also depending on the position so for example this book here this book here that book there in a different position plural these books and plural those books okay so there is a big importance between the difference between this that these and those and you need to be very sure okay so for today that's just probably sufficient for an introduction finally I just want to say one thing about the suffix and the prefix so you need to be familiar with the concept of a suffix and a prefix because in my opinion the analysis and the study of a suffix and a prefix is a big advantage and a big help for you to understand the word so for example the family of the word we have the verb we have the noun we have the adjective we have the adverb so you need to be familiar with the difference and usually the difference is the suffix okay so the ly normally is the adverb a b l e is normally adjective i z e is normally verb and a n c e is normally substantive so this area in my opinion is a big help and a big support to study english and to be and to recognize the difference it's very very important okay writing is a very important skill and i encourage i uh, suggest that you should write frequently and that you should practice your writing i think it's a very good idea and it's necessary to improve also reading a big piece of advice a big tip to help you improve english you need to read 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 magazine read a book and continue to read as much as possible that's a big tip 
uh, it's not very dramatic it's very obvious and writing as well is very important and speaking okay exams are very popular so some people need the Cambridge exams some people need the IELTS exams and during the class I try to keep this in mind also because the Cambridge exams first certificate advanced certificate proficiency are very popular and the IELTS exams are very important and popular as well okay super so that is the introduction and every day I try to refresh and to reinforce the vocabulary and the technical uh, expressions because the grammar is very important and the introduction is very important okay this is my dog so sometimes he is in the garden and you can hear him so I want to introduce my dog his name is Ronnie and um, I think originally after maybe Ronaldo the footballer so that's my dog um, and I'm sure you will hear him this week or you will hear him soon okay so uh, everything is free I'll show you that at the end that's just if you want to make a little contribution or a little support but here is the book okay so this book is about a football manager and it's an autobiography and in my opinion it's very good in relation to vocabulary and in relation to conversation okay so yesterday we analyzed this page and today we will continue a little with the story so it's a prologue it's the first page you can see at the top and the man is just speaking a little about the financial problems of the club the financial problems of the team so we stopped yesterday at the bottom and you remember uh, persuaded the verb to persuade is like to convince you remember yesterday or to twist your arm so if you twist somebody's arm it's to con uh, persuade or to convince somebody that was yesterday to twist my arm has the significance to convince or to persuade and you also remember wealthy I'm not sure if you remember the significance of wealthy so wealthy was the adjective and the significance is rich so if you are a wealthy person you are a rich person if it's a wealthy country it's a rich country a wealthy city a rich city okay so the significance is rich but the noun is wealth and the substantive so you need to be very clear and the expression yesterday was the same your health is your wealth that was the famous expression yesterday so I'll write that here your health is your wealth okay so that is one example and here he said we had been on a good run so run is obviously the verb you run but it's possible with a company you can run a company and you can run a business and the significance is to manage a company or to manage a business so run is very flexible to run a business or to run a company has the significance to manage okay we have a phrasal verb to run out of sugar and I'm very curious if you are familiar with this expression so I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can see but this is a phrasal verb to run out of very very common and very important and maybe you can explain in the comment if you think you know the answer you can write but you run out of sugar means that you lose the quantity of sugar you run out of time you lose the quantity of time okay so you in an exam you have one hour to complete your exam and now it's 55 minutes and you are running out of time so you are losing time and you are um you are running so it's very common run out of time run out of money run out of energy it's like to lose so it's very very common it is logical because run is movement and out because you have the quantity so it's always logical and that's one example um another possibility is to run up a bill so a bill is like in the restaurant or in electricity very typical for electricity in your house if you use the electricity a lot a lot a lot you are running up a bill so it's again connected to run like movement and run up a bill is to uh, have or to create a big quantity in your bill okay and um, it's possible to say I am running late so obviously physical run is number one but the metaphor is in relation to your time if you are late you are running late so it's not physically running it's just your job and your day it's going late so that's possible as well to run late okay so they are very very common to run a business to run a company to run out of something to run up a bill and to run late okay and um, they are very typical but here in relation to sport if you are on a good run substantive a run 
a good run it's like a good period okay like momentum so the team are on a good run they're on a good they're in a good period that's the significance here and also yesterday we spoke about to fancy okay so the adjective was fancy and the significance was very pretty so for example your dress is very fancy your clothes are very fancy the flower is maybe very or the decorations are very fancy and the significance is like pretty number one but the verb is very common in conversation i fancy some chocolate i fancy watching a movie i fancy going to uh, bulgaria so the significance is i want or i would like so to fancy has the significance i want or i would like okay and it's very common in conversation um i would i fancy some pizza i fancy some chocolate i fancy watching the movie very very common okay and here it's the past so they fancy their possibilities they fancy their up their chances in sports and the next page is uh, getting something and i'll make it a little bit bigger for everybody so he was very confident and he fancied their chances he fancied their opportunity i think it's a little slow yeah sorry um yeah so he he liked his chances he was confident with his chances of getting something from so that's the typical preposition to get something from the shop to get something from the book to get something from okay our that's the possession remember my so it, the substantive is the game my game your game but the possession our and biggest so the adjective is big the comparative is bigger and the superlative biggest okay remember that structure comparative and adjective you have the adjective happy and it's possible irregular happier happiest tired more tired most tired okay so the structure of the comparative and the superlative is very frequent and very common in english there is a problem because we have a lot of irregular comparatives and irregular superlatives usually it depends on the syllable if the word is one syllable usually we add er or est but because we have a lot of different uh, syllables in english it's irregular for example interesting more interesting most interesting okay interesting less interesting least interesting so you need to be very very clear with that structure so i will write here E or EST is usually the comparative and the superlative, okay? Um, for example, big, bigger, and usually we say bigger than, and then the biggest. So that's the regular rule, that's the normal rule, okay? Um, so far is very important, okay? So our biggest game of the season so far. You can see it here, and it is very simple, but it's very, very important so for example this year january and february we have spent a lot of money until now okay so we have spent a lot of money so far that's the significance until now um are you happy in dublin i have been in dublin for two months and so far until this moment i am very happy very simple but very common and a little difficult to understand and um, we have one famous expression so far so good and it's the same concept so you started for two months in dublin and until this moment everything is good until this moment so far okay that's the first significance the second significance is a little different because remember the rule with so is to intensify the adjective so so intensifies normally the adjective happy so happy intensify tired so tired intensify so it is possible another uh, structure and there's another possibility so far has a completely different meaning so for example to travel from dublin to galway is so far it's far lejos in espanol but it's so far intensify okay so that is very very important and here um, he said we had a good mix of youngsters and old hands okay so we had a good mix of youngsters and old hands so the verb is to mix and it's typical with food you mix the food you mix the people you mix your whatever you want the verb is to mix okay and the substantive is a mix and here they say youngsters okay so the word a youngster 
is a very important word. Young is the adjective, and I think everybody understands the adjective young. But a youngster is the substantive, and it's flexible. So a youngster is the name of a young person. It's a little informal, but it is very common. You are a youngster means you are a young person. We have another word that is practically the same, a youth, okay, or a young person. So these words are practically the same. And this is a typical question. People ask me all the time, what's the significance of a youngster, a youth, or a young person? And practically, they are exactly the same. Probably, youngster is a little more informal and a little more conversational. A youngster is a little more informal, okay? But really, they are the same. And here he has an expression, an old hand. And it's a little idiom, and it's maybe a little older. It's not very common, in my opinion. This man is maybe 70. The writer is maybe 70 years old, so possibly different vocabulary. But an old hand is a metaphor for an experienced player. So if you are an old hand at music, you are an old hand, you are an experienced person. Okay, that's the significance, really. An experienced person. Um, we have another expression. A dab hand is more... Um, common and the significance is very talented or you have great ability in form so if you are a dab hand the meaning is you're very talented you're a dab hand at music you're a dab hand at painting you are a talented or very skillful or you have a lot of ability so if you're a dab hand you have a lot of ability that is possible um and i think my typing has gone very bad again today but that's one possibility a dab hand so here they say an old hand is an experienced, um, and we have one expression, we say an old, um, a young, so an old head on young shoulders, that's the expression, your head, cabeza, you have an old head on young shoulders, and maybe you're familiar with the significance, an old head on young shoulders. So that means a very mature, a very responsible person. If you have an old head on young body, on young shoulders, you are very responsible and very mature. Okay, that's probably the significant mature or responsible. And yeah, I think that's the most typical with hand. Um, also the adjective handy, handy person. So adjective handy person is a very useful person. So if you can fix things in the house, you can fix a lot of problems. You are a very handy person. You're very handy. You're very useful. Um, do you have a pen handy? Do you have a pen handy? That means do you have a pen close to you so the word hand is very flexible we have a lot of expressions um, and that's the question do you have a pen handy and that means do you have a pen nearby or close nearby or close to you okay just a few examples because we have a lot of different contexts and a different possibilities in english so he continues and after winning so normally after the preposition, we have the ing of the verb. After going, after eating, after drinking. The same with before. So we have some prepositions. You can say after, before, without. Normally, the next verb is the ing. Okay, that's a typical rule. It's not all the time, but the majority of the cases we have after winning, after talking, after going, after eating, ing. Or before, before eating, before watching, before talking. That's the general rule and it is very important that you are familiar and try to recognise that. So after winning six previous promotions, I could recognise the signs of a team. Okay, I'll zoom out because it's a bit difficult to see. Here the expression is a team on the up. Okay, so the team is the equipo. The team is on the up. So this is the expression on the up. And it's probably literal. So if your company, your business is on the up, your career is on the up. So the up is the substantive. So it's growing, it's improving, it's successing, so it's more successful. So your business is on the up, it's happier, it's better, it's in a good position. Um, and that's the significance. So the team in this situation is improving, the team is growing, and the team is better and better and better. So it's on the up, okay? Um, and that's very typical. And then the next expression is then, next, then, we came. So the verb is come, and the past is came, and the subject is we. So we came down, preposition, movement to. 
so we came down to earth okay so this is the same expression from yesterday because if you are very successful you are very happy you are very confident you're very high and then you have a problem you have an incident and you come down to earth into reality and you feel maybe more normal everything is a bit more realistic a bit more difficult so you need to come down to earth okay and here's the past in more ways than one the next expression is to turn on okay and that's very simple I think the verb is to turn but turn on is typical for electronics turn on the computer turn on the television turn on the radio turn on the light so for electronics it's very typical and common to turn on okay and that's the expression here in relation to the mobile phone in this example they land in the airplane and they turn on the mobile phone okay um, so it is very important for electronic situations to turn on it is possible in romantic situations as well to turn the person on is possible in romantic but also very typical for electronics so the light turn on the light turn on the television and the opposite is turn off okay turn off the light turn on the or turn off the computer turn off the television so the opposite is to turn off okay and um, again it's typical in romantic situations uh, to turn on is like attractive and turn off is something not attractive okay so for example if the person is picking the nose it's a turn off it, it's not attractive okay so it is typical in conversation the next expression is to come to a stop so the airplane yes the verb to stop but the structure is possible to come to a stop okay and um, that verb is possible to come to realize to come to know and um, for example to come to know Dublin to come to realize it's the process of eventually realizing and the process of eventually knowing and here come to a stop is the process of eventually stopping okay the next expression is very typical in conversation as well but nobody so nobody and no one are practically the same you can say anybody anyone and you can say nobody no one with the same significance okay so here nobody and the expression is to take notice okay so if somebody insults you somebody criticizes you you have two options you can listen to the insult you can let the insult affect you that's the first option or the second option is to ignore and the synonym for ignore is to take no notice so if I take no notice, I don't pay attention, I don't accept, I don't listen. Okay, so it is typical, take no notice. So again, an argument with two people and one person is criticizing the other person and the extra friend, the advice said, take no notice, don't listen. Okay, so it is important to take no notice. Um, the next expression is very conversational as well because everybody understands a taxi. A taxi is the substantive like the car you need a taxi but it is possible a verb to taxi okay the first significance the verb I taxi my brother to the cinema and it's a little informal that I bring my brother to the cinema I take my brother to the cinema but in relation to the airplane they taxi is the significance to move slowly so you are at the gate with the airplane and to taxi is to move slowly so it is possible the verb but it's related to the taxi it's the same concept like to move okay towards is a preposition and in espanol it's hacia so towards is the direction is the direction and the preposition i'm uh, moving towards the car the car is moving towards the light so towards is the movement so it's an important preposition okay suddenly is the adverb and the substantive is a sudden so suddenly is the adverb and so for example it's connected with the verb i suddenly realized i suddenly heard i suddenly saw so it's connected with the verb and um adjective is sudden a sudden change a sudden comment a very quick or a very unpredictable very sudden okay and um, so it's possible the adjective and the adverb you just need to be aware full of little beep okay so the verb is to beep and the substantive is a beep and it's typical for the car so the car the verb the man beeps the horn okay so that's one expression to beep the horn um, number one and on your phone I heard a beep the substantive is a beep 
there are a lot of beeps from my phone okay so just to be clear with the difference between the verb and the substantive um and typical on the television in the series when you have a bad word a very vulgar word you have the beep beep like the the, the sounds to ignore or the sound to block the bad word so that's possible as well a beep okay um so here suddenly the airplane all of a sudden de repente was full of beeps because everybody turned on the mobile phone okay staff so you need to understand my players and staff to the terrible news so players are the football players and staff are the workers so in your job you have the staff the staff are the workers you need to be clear with the difference staff and stuff so stuff are like things and staff are the workers so in your company in your business you have a lot of staff in the shop you have a lot of staff but for the products I have a lot of stuff in my and again the pronunciation you in my bag I have a lot of stuff but in the shop there are a lot of staff okay so the difference between staff and stuff also we have the verb to stuff and it's typical with my face maybe informal so if I'm eating a lot of food I stuff my face I fill my face I fill myself with food so to stuff your face is to eat a lot okay that's the significance to eat a lot um, adjective is possible as well stuffy so remember it's completely different staff and stuff are completely different but there is a possible adjective stuffy and it's typical for the room in the restaurant you enter the restaurant you enter the bar and the room or the restaurant or the bar is very stuffy and it's the sensation that it's very warm a lot of people very uncomfortable it's very stuffy okay so that's possible for an adjective as well um okay so that's sufficient i think for an explanation for the little book um again that's the book it's just the story of a person involved in football and this page is just a description of one day so it's difficult but some good examples of vocabulary and probably we will continue with a different book next week okay so i think it's good practice and my big advice is to read the best way to improve the best way to learn english well one of the best ways is to read you need to read 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 magazines read newspapers read books you need to read a lot to recognize the vocabulary to recognize the structures and to be very familiar so it's a big uh, recommendation to read it's obvious but it's very important okay so that is the introduction and um, now I want to show you something in relation to the video so this is difficult and the class maybe is difficult but in particular this video is very typical conversation very simple so the vocabulary is not very difficult the vocabulary is probably quite simple but it's a typical example of the difficulty with the accent so this lady is an actress from ireland she's a very well she is a very famous actress from ireland and the man is a famous comedian and it's an interview so the man asks a lot of questions and they have a conversation so a very normal irish conversation very typical and you can see the lady the lady was the actress in the movie home alone so you remember the movie home alone okay and this was the character of the lady so that's to give you the context and here on the right I have the script so I'm going to show you the script after so we will play the video maybe for one minute or two minutes and your job is to try to understand the conversation but it's extremely difficult and after the conversation I will show you the vocabulary and the tips and just to help you a little okay so good luck it's very hard and i will play a little and i will return in one minute okay so i'll increase the volume and hopefully you uh, it's a good experience for you to check okay and hopefully the volume is okay hopefully you can hear everything okay so i'll press play and hopefully there's no Hi. problem with the connection good now i know and you can't give me a hug no i'd like to <laughs> you Shame. look like you, you look like you'd be a good hug <laughs> i'm watching you i'm watching you hugging you're great uh, you nearly squeezed michael d to death I was, um, the, the one and only time I met you was at the, I think it was the 50 years of the Late Late Show or something like that. And I was saying to you that um, you had no memory of it, but my mother 
had a memory of living with you for a little while somewhere. I knew that was going to be the first Yeah, but that was just... I was it. trying to have a conversation with you that night, but everybody was, it was very crowded and messy, yeah, and yeah. I just tapped you on the shoulder, and you turned down, and you said, every time you're on the television, my mother says, you look in the Finchley Road. And I couldn't yeah. talk to you, and I could be, what's your mother's maiden name? And you were off chat. She would have been uh, Helen O'Brien. Doesn't ring a bell. And I've done a bit of research on this since you said that, and I've kind yeah. of backtracked. And there was a bit of a, a lot of people were passing through, <laughs> through that flat. A lot of uh, um, you were very. How are you? Okay, so that's just a little example. Um, general conversation for two people. So just a very simple conversation, very very fast, very normal and probably you had a lot of difficulty to understand so now I want to show you the script okay so first he says how are you so this is extremely common uh, way to salute or to greet somebody okay so to greet or to salute somebody so this is the verb to greet it's like to welcome or to salute and the substantive is a greeting okay so the noun is a greeting and basically it's very common in ireland we say how are you originally is number one but we can uh, very typical to say how are ya but very short you can say how are you <laughs> and how are you has the significance of how are you okay so this is very irish and how uh, how are you has the significance how are you okay so really it's how are you and she says good and i know subject verb and you can't give so remember the modal is can for ability so can is ability and i'll make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see so the rule after the modal remember can is ability so i can hug a brother okay substantive is a hug the object is me so this is the pronoun give me but remember after the modal the next verb after the modal is the infinitive to go to eat to give but the rule it's necessary to eliminate two so you can give or you cannot give so in this case it's the negative but also when you write it's more typical in english to write cannot so in the formal correct way in writing we say cannot in your writing okay so this is the correct way especially in writing okay then she says no I, I'd like to so basically she says no I would like to and the significance is I would like to and basically she would like to hug you okay but she says I'd like to okay you look like so you seem parather you would you'd is a contraction for you would be a good hug <laughs> okay so you look like you'd be a good hug and this is the expression so she says I'm watching you that's the expression and I'm uh, watching you hugging you're great you nearly squeezed michael d to death so this is the expression you nearly squeezed michael d to death so the verb is to squeeze and it's this action with the sponge so you have the sponge okay so you know the sponge and you squeeze the sponge okay so in relation to a hug it's possible to squeeze the person and it's possible informal you can say you have a new squeeze which is very, very informal, very conversational for a new partner or a new uh, relationship in romantic situations. You have a new squeeze. It's very informal, um, not so common, but it means that you have a new partner, okay? A new squeeze is maybe a new partner. Number one, and also it's very flexible to squeeze. So for example, time, you have only one hour for the meeting. You have only a limit. So you try to squeeze more activity into the hour. So to squeeze is this action, and it's very common in the bus. In Dublin, for example, the bus is very busy, a lot of people on the bus, and one person extra squeezes on the bus. So the verb to squeeze is very important. And this is the expression to squeeze to death is one possibility. You could say to bore to death is very typical. So bore is the verb. And it's related to bored and boring. So the cinema or the movie is very boring. I am bored. But it is possible a verb to bore. So for example in the class. It's very boring. And I speak. So the verb to bore. I bore you to death. 
so it's so bad so boring that eventually you die okay and here it's about hugging so you squeeze and Michael D is the name of the president of Ireland so the president of Ireland is Michael D Higgins and he was probably on the show in the conversation last week and they had a big hug and he almost it's a metaphor almost killed him because he was so so such a big hug okay but it is a famous expression to I am bored to death so because of the pandemic it's necessary to stay at home and you have nothing to do so you are bored to death you ha you're almost dying because you've nothing to do it's metaphor obviously okay and then he says something like or something like that so I the last time I saw you I think was the show or something like that so I'm not sure if you say or something like that it's significance that you are not sure okay so how was the weekend how was the party um, what what did the boy say oh the boy said he was very happy the boy said he was very uh, comfortable in Dublin or something like that so the significance is not exactly approximately okay approximately so something like that has the significance of approximately and I'll put that here in the in the text approximately um, and again she says I was saying to ya so ya is the significance of you a little while is a little time so while is possible in the middle of the sentence mientras in espanol so I go to the cinema while you go to the shop okay I watch the television while you read the book so while is the significance at the same time it is possible at the beginning meanwhile so meanwhile is typical at the beginning and while is more typical in the middle okay so the difference between meanwhile and while but also we have the substantive a while and the significance of the substantive is a little time so I will go to the shop for a while I will go to the shop for a little time okay I will be a little while the significance is I will be a little time okay so while is like time and here the significance living with you for a little while for a little time okay so I'll just zoom out a little so you can see um, that was the sentence so my mother had a memory of living with you for a little while okay and then she says I knew that was going to be the first thing you said uh, the situation it the party so the, the the show or the party where they met it was very crowded so this is the adjective crowded okay and it means a lot of people so remember the substantive is a crowd a crowd is a group of people on the street you have a crowd it's a group of people but the adjective is crowded like stuffy you remember in the restaurant it's very stuffy but the room is very crowded the hotel is very crowded the street is very crowded a lot of people okay so the adjective is crowded um, and it is possible the verb to crowd maybe around so if you have an incident on the street and a lot of people crowd around the incident so it is possible the verb as well okay so here's the adjective crowded messy is like very dirty very uh, disorganized the opposite is organized the opposite opposite is clean or tidy and the opposite again is messy okay so organized tidy clean they are all the opposites and then you can say the opposite is messy okay and it is a verb as well to mess and it is a substantive a mess so you need again to be clear with the difference between the verb the adjective and the substantive so here it's the situation the party was is the past very messy the next verb I just tapped you on the shoulder okay so I just tapped you on the shoulder the verb to tap is related to this action okay so the tap is this action number one number two it's typical in the kitchen you have the tap grifo in espanol so grifo is tap physical but the action is this to tap you on the shoulder okay um, and it's also possible in uh, the FBI so if you tap the phone it's possible that you intercept the signal or you listen secretly to the signal so to tap a phone is possible as well in intelligence or secret service okay so to tap the phone call is maybe to listen 
secretly okay so that's another possibility but physically number one to tap is this okay um maiden name so this is very important maiden name so my name is my family name and um, but typically the maybe the, the woman changes the name in marriage so always in the past the woman changes the name so she has a new name in marriage but before she was married she had her own name and this is the maiden name so the maiden name is the name of the lady before she was married okay so the question is what's your mother's maiden name so what was the name of the mother before she was married okay so a maiden name is that significance and you were off chatting so the significance is you are here I am here and I'm speaking to you but I look and you are off chatting so you are away in a different position so you are off chatting okay and I think we have one expression don't doesn't ring a bell okay so to ring a bell the expression is it rings a bell the verb to ring is like yamar but a bell is campania I think so it's in relation to a metaphor for your memory so you tell me the name and I think I think and nothing no movement I don't remember so there's in my brain there's no bell ringing and that's the expression so it's an idiom and if you tell me the name and yes I remember it rings a bell okay that's the affirmative but the negative you do not remember you don't know I don't know it doesn't ring a bell I, I don't know so that's very very important and very typical conversation expression okay it doesn't ring a bell is the negative um, and here she's trying to think she's thinking and thinking but no memory no nothing is happening so it doesn't ring a bell she does not remember okay a bit of is a little so I have done a little research a bit of a bit of sugar a bit of time a bit of milk a little on so in relation to research the typical preposition is research on the medicine research on the topic research on okay um, and then finally a lot of people were passing through so you can see here a lot of people is the subject the verb is were passing so it's the past continuous were passing and through is the preposition so if you are only passing through you're only visiting the opposite is to stay to live to stay to live the opposite is just to pass through okay so just one little example of a basic conversation but now I will show you the video again with the script at the side and hopefully you can understand a little and you can identify the script okay so I'm going to move the text here I'm going to go back to the beginning and hopefully you can understand everything so it's a little difficult but I think it's good practice also for you a good activity to practice your listening okay so I'll show you the screen here and I'll play the, the, the movie I know, and you can't give me a hug. No, I'd like to. <laughs> you, look like you, you look like you'd be a good hug. <laughs> I'm watching you. I'm watching you hugging. You're great. You, uh, nearly, you nearly squeezed Michael D to death. I was, um, the, the one and only time I met you was at the, I think it was the 50 years of the Late Late Show or something like that. And I was saying to you that um, you had no memory of it, but my mother had a memory of living with you for a little while somewhere. I knew that was going to be the first Yeah, but that was just... My... I was trying to have a conversation with you that night, but everybody was... It was very crowded and messy, yeah, and yeah. I just tapped you on the shoulder, and you turned down, and you said, every time you're on the television, my mother says, you look in the finish I couldn't yeah. talk to you, and I could be, what's your mother's maiden name? And you were off chat. She would have been uh, Helen O'Brien. Talk doesn't ring a From bell. From Clonmel. And I've done a bit of research on this since you said that, and I've kind yeah. of backtracked. And there was a bit of a, a lot of people were passing through, <laughs> through that flat. A lot of uh, um, you were very. How young. are you? okay very very good so that is uh, a good practice for the listening and a very good example of irish conversation and i have a lot of sympathy for you because it is very very difficult and to understand english is very hard and that's a good example of the difficulty to to understand listening okay good so now is an opportunity for speaking so uh, thank you for listening to the explanation so it's a bit heavy I'm speaking a lot explanation for the technique for the vocabulary and for the movie as well 
but now maybe it's a good opportunity to practice some speaking. So I think Olympia was the first person and I can speak with Olympia first and then maybe we can introduce Eliana. Okay, so if you're ready, Olympia, we can connect and I can just move this here and I can make some notes at the same time. So Olympia, he hello, how are you? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Where Where are you from? Okay, fantastic. And what is the situation in Italy? Do you... One moment. Yeah. Same with me. I'm gonna. Hello. How are you? Fine. Can you hear me? Yes. Where Where are you from? Okay. Um. Yeah, there's a problem, Olympia, with the. Let me try to move this because I think there's a problem with the audio. Uh, can you hear me now? No, okay, so let me see. Maybe I can change this. I'm just trying to figure out to understand the participants. Okay, here we go. So, Olympia, can you hear me? I'll try one more time. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. I don't know. Yes, I can hear you now. How are you? Fine. Good, good. And where are you from? Italia. Ah, okay, uh, perfect. Living in Romania. Okay, cool. And um, what is the situation in Romania? Is is life? Is it good to live in Romania? Yes. <laughs> yes, I so. What? And, uh, yeah. I live in in Turnumagurele in a city, a little city. Uh, South uh, uh, Romania. Okay, and then. Um, Bulgaria. Is it famous for anything in particular? Your city or your village is is well known? Yes. Yeah? Come village, just a little, little city. Are. Yeah. But uh, 4,000 uh, population. Okay. And do you visit Italy often? You visit Italy frequently, or you you never visit Italy? I um, um what you say? I um, volevo. I want to visit Italy. Yeah. In, uh, last year. Okay. Pandemic not possible with pandemic. Yeah, exactly. And what do you prefer? Do you prefer living in Romania or do you prefer living in Italy? Is um, I'm a bit water. I'm uh, is, it's okay and uh, here. Yeah. Um, but family is in in Italy. Of course, Later. of course. And English, um. Is it easy for you? English is easy for you, or is it difficult? Or what is your story in relation to English? I read English, but uh, it's difficult. Um, uh, yeah. But difficult uh, is speaking. Okay, yes. And do you need English at the moment, for example, for work or for socialize, or is it just an interest or a hobby? Okay, great. And what is the most difficult for you? Maybe speaking is the most difficult? Yes. Okay. Okay, and do you have the opportunity to practice? Yes. With with other people? Uh, I understand. <laughs> normally, normally, at the moment, you have the opportunity to practice speaking with other people or you have no opportunity to practice? Ah, okay. Yes, yes. But during the week, normally during the week in in Romania, you have the possibility. Ah, I no, no. No. <laughs> but maybe, maybe with the internet, it's possible. You think it's possible? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Okay. And the class. How is the class? Is the class easy for you, or is the class difficult? Or you have any recommendation? Um. Is. Uh, Yes. But uh, I 
Louise. Okay, good, good. Is it difficult to understand me? Um, no. No, okay. Um, um, but do you speak in uh, my Zuli? Yeah. Little Zuli, yeah, yes. Okay. And have you visited Ireland before? Or have you visited Ireland or England before? Uh, no. 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 The, the weather. The weather is very bad here. It's rain. Normally, it's raining. It's very dark. It's very cloudy. The weather normally is very bad in Ireland. In Romania and Italy, probably it's fantastic. Uh, yes. Dar, uh, but um, I. I live in, in Oras, uh, near uh, Rome. Okay. And uh, is um, do you speak English? Uh, do you speak in Italian? Uh, Espanol, but it's <laughs> it's it's un po un poco similar. Creo que es similar. Uh, nebbia. Ah, okay. I think maybe cloudy, like nebuloso. Yes. Ah, so similar to Ireland. Yes. Oof. Okay. So maybe in Italy, uh, in, in the uh, south. Now, yeah. Now it's. Uh, uh, Fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's two past. Uh, past two. Two uh, to past fourteen, and uh, yeah. near is. Uh, is uh, the sun. Ah, okay. But uh, in the morning, yeah, it's closed. Ah, okay. So it changes. It changes a little. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Okay, super. Um, Olympia, thank you so much for connecting. It's very, it's fantastic to participate, and it's it's super to practice. So I am very happy, and thank you for connecting. Okay, uh, me too. Okay, super, and have a good day. And now we will connect with um. Eliana, so I'm going to try and connect now with, thank you very much Olympia, that was fantastic, and now I'm going to connect with Eliana, okay, so hopefully we can connect with Eliana, and she's probably connecting with the audio, and that was very good practice with Olympia, so Olympia, in English, so Olympia is in Romania, and um, she's originally from Italy, so very good. So we're just waiting, I think, for Eliana, and hopefully we can practice some more. So, yeah, we'll just wait one moment. You can see the Zoom, it's a, it's a little tricky and a little difficult with the uh, technology. So you see the little symbol here at the bottom? So we're probably waiting for Eliana. Okay, so um, maybe it's difficult, but I will leave that for the moment, and I will continue with the class. So that is the class. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for for connecting. And I'll just move this a little bit so we'll finish the class. Um, yeah, so really, really good. If you want to continue practicing with the participation in the class, it's a very good opportunity to practice speaking. Everything is free. If you want to make a small contribution for me, it would be fantastic. And uh, maybe one euro if you can and um, whatever you want uh, to support or to donate a contribution would be fantastic my idea is to continue every morning at 11 quarter past 11 in the morning and to continue with a similar structure introduction we analyze some vocabulary analyze some grammar and maybe some listening and some speaking so that's the idea it's a good opportunity during the pandemic everybody is at home and it's uh, a very good opportunity to help. And for me, it's a good opportunity to return to work. And I hope the class is a little helpful for you. Sometimes it's difficult, but learning English is difficult. And I hope you can have patience and try to improve a little. So this is just to support me a little if you want. It's only optional, but for me, it would be a great boost and a great encouragement. But uh, that's the information if you want. Okay, Eliana, I think we have still a problem with the uh, connecting so I'll just double check again can you hear me Eliana no I don't think so so I'll just double check again if she is here 
and I think yeah it's still the same problem with the with the audio which is a pity okay so thank you so much everybody have a super day and I will put the comments on the uh, Facebook page and you can see all the information and thank you so much for attending and enjoy the rest of your day have a great day and talk to you soon bye bye